everybody and welcome to HTC Invitational. I'm your host, Nimsh, and I'm joined here by my co-host, Monk. Monk, how are you, man? Uh, great, because we had a great series of games yesterday, and now we're down to the final eight, the best players in the HTC Invitational, and I guarantee you guys, this, these games are going to be even better. Oh man, we had an amazing 16, uh, well, eight games yesterday, 16 players, eight players got eliminated. So uh, can you please run me down through what have we seen yesterday? What was the most amazing thing that we saw and um, other things? Well, we saw like a lot of created deck lists. Uh, players these days are thinking, um, I better bring like the best deck list. So a lot of players are bringing Patron Warrior, they're bringing the Hybrid Hunter, and they're bringing either Zoo or Handlock. But outside of that, players are like Tides of Times. He brought kind of like a Dragon, uh, Dragon Warrior, a Dragon Hunter, uh, a Murloc Warlock, I believe. And yes, uh, yeah, other really players boring. like... RDU brought an aggro paladin and a, a different build of aggro paladin that we haven't even seen before. And a dog, of course, he brought shaman. And unfortunately, that didn't really pan up to stuff. All right. That, that was an amazing day. And uh, I just want to remind all the viewers that are joining right now, what are we doing here? So we are running an HTC Invitational sponsored by HTC. There is a $5,000 prize pool. The winner will take $2,000, $500. And $500 uh, as, as the main prize. And uh, we had a round of 16. Eight players got eliminated. Eight players advanced to today. Today we are going through all the uh, remaining matches. So we'll have seven matches for you, I believe. Uh, four now, then um, the semifinals and the final. And oh man, there will be a lot of good action. Uh, best of fives, conquest format, a lot of innovation, a lot of good stuff. Yeah, just running down the bracket. First match, we have Forsen versus Kalento. Probably the favorite of the tournament versus uh, one of the players that perhaps a lot of people didn't expect to advance to the round of 16, being that, uh, of course, Forsen's nickname is sometimes O Forsen. I mean, he is a very good player, but a lot of people just like to kind of make fun of his reputation of going either 0 4 or 4 0. Then we had Tice versus Hyped, uh, Tempo Storm versus Nahilam. And then another uh, Nahilam versus uh, an ex Tempo Storm player in the form of RDU versus Tides. And then we're going to finish it off the round of eight with an American Brawl, Stripe Pro versus Trump. Oh man, the host of the channels, uh, Trump. A fighting versus Strife Crow. So, you know, we, we've seen Trump um, win versus Chucky mm -hmm. yesterday. And uh, it was a pretty dominant victory, 3 to 1. Do you think Trump will do well versus Strife Crow? Is his lineup uh, a. a heavy control anti-aggro lineup good versus strife crow well strife crow i believe strife crow is bringing like the most standard lineup possible uh, a hunter he's bringing a uh, handlock or I, I forget if it's handlock or zoo but he's bringing a warlock and he's bringing a patron warrior so handlock. overall that was handlock. yeah it was handlock okay so just overall a very standard uh lineup whereas trump i felt like he kind of brought an anti-hunter lineup so at least uh in the conquest format all you have to do is beat one deck three times, or you just have to force one deck to uh, not take a game from your opponent's side. So if he's targeting Hunter, which is kind of an aggro deck, I think he should still be fine against Strife Crow. All right, perfect. I'm definitely looking forward to that match. But we're going to start with Forsen versus Colento. And Forsen, you know, started the series uh, as an 0-2, and then he climbed back, um, defeating, what is, what was it, Nairia's Druid? Yes. Nairia's yeah, Druid, 3-0. Uh, exactly. Uh, Forsen, he brought a very anti-Druid lineup of Mech Mage, Mech Shaman, and Zoo. All of these three decks, they're probably the three best decks against Druid, so he was definitely targeting that class. Nerea actually won two games immediately, but then when it came up to his Druid, he just couldn't win a game because he was drawing like below average slightly, and his opponent drew about average. So basically, if you just draw that way, the Mech, uh, the mech decks and the Zoo will always win. Now, and I believe you know is actually running Druid as well. Exactly, and it's going to be like the same challenge. Kalento should be somewhat easily be able to take the first two games, but then when it comes to Druid, he's going to struggle a lot. All right, and then we will have Tais versus Hyped, where Hyped brought the Control Warrior. What does it change in that matchup? Tais, I believe, had a pretty standard Warrior Warlock Hunter, right? Yeah, I believe uh, it's probably, again, the most standard lineup. Uh, Patron Warrior, I believe Handlock, and... A kind of hybrid uh, hunter. I hybrid believe it's, hunter, like, yeah. it's actually the exact list of hybrid hunter that uh, Prototype ra uh, ran to rank one legend a few days ago. Uh, and then uh, Hyped is running his. Um, I remember like Weird Mage, right? Yeah, he was ran. It? 
No, he ran Mech Mage, Mech Mage, but he had Harrison Jones teched in the Mech Mage, so certainly an anti-hunter and anti-warlock decision. Then he ran kind of more standard decks. He ran actually Control Warrior, which is yeah. a class that we've almost never seen hyped run ever since. Uh, I believe the last time he ran that class and ran that deck was actually in WCA last year. So that's about almost a year ago. All right, but game number one is ready, so we can start Invitational right now, day to Colento versus Forsen, Warlock versus Druid. Yeah, uh, probably uh, overall it's a good matchup for Warlock, but as we can see from Colento's hand, yeah, this hand actually is curving out fairly well, um, especially that walled growth. In Nairia's games yesterday, one of the reasons that Nairia uh, couldn't take any games with his Druid was that he never drew walled growth. Yeah, he also had problems with his mana, um, just wasting one mana almost every turn. Even though he got a very good start, um, just uh, with Coin uh, Innervate Keeper, then he was uh, he wasn't able to use his mana efficiently. Here for Colento, he has everything. He has a perfect curve. Uh, that Harrison Jones is not going to do much, but he will be able to play minions uh, to contest the board. And unfortunately for Sporsen, this is kind of not the hand that you want. Having a tap on turn three. As a, a zoo lock is definitely such a shame. And now his opponent can deal with the void caller, but he still doesn't have a huge AOE. He doesn't have like even a wrath to deal with this kind of annoying. Dar oh, I spoke too oh. soon. There's the swipe. Yeah, he he picks up this the swipe. Uh, the, are you sure this is the zoo lock though? It well, looks like Zeman lock. Of course, uh, the Nimsh coin term Zeman lock. Um, so this is interesting. I think you can probably get a bit more value if you swipe the Dire Wolf Alpha here. But Klento is uh, almost certainly pointing towards that Void Walker. Yeah, the question is do you want to attack? If you want to attack with your with your Shade, then you probably uh, swipe the, the Wolf and attack into Void Walker to only take one point of damage. Even though it seems obvious that you want to swipe the yeah. minion with, if, the, with the most toughness, right? Yeah, if he doesn't um, attack this turn, it's because he wants to play around Implosion. He sees that his opponent's hand is actually just really, um, like, it's it's not that good right now. Uh, he, so he must have a lot of clunky cards, and Implosion is certainly a clunky card that he would have so that he, he had to tap on turn three. Yeah. I like playing the, uh, the Shredder there. He has a lot of minions in his hand, and he also has a possibility of raffle with um, Edge of Lore. So just going for minions to try to bait out the implosion as well. A pretty excellent play. Now we have a, a decent swipe, but actually, is this board... Th yeah, I think you do swipe, because if you play anything else, you're just giving a free value to, to the imps. Um, the other play would be just hero power the, the dire wolf. Because if you play Druid of the Claw, Druid of the Claw just dies to imps. All right, so Colanto chooses to swipe, and uh, now Forsen picks up Bane of Doom. It's really weird that Forsen doesn't have those minions. Uh, I believe we lost Monk for a moment, but so uh, we're trying to get him back. All right, so Colanto. Facing that single Voidwalker, having many options here. Druid of the Claw, Sylvanas. No Druid of the Claw charge would be an option as well. Druid of the Claw in, a, in its own is fine. Sylvanas is playing around Impossible Doomguard. Yeah, it just sets up a board, right, that, that Forsen can't really deal with really efficiently. He would need a, a second implosion, perhaps. Power of Overwhelming is a good answer, though. It's very efficient. Yeah, it is but, perfect uh, answer. Yeah, but after that, what happens, really? I guess I guess he can he can actually implode, or rather, Bane of Doom, the uh, Void Caller that's remaining. Or yeah. Do, yeah. Maybe he'll get something something great, like Illidan or Mulganis. Imp Gangboss okay, that's, is not terrible. Yeah, that's about average. I would even say slightly above average here. 
But then but this turn is a Col huge tempo swing anyway. Colento um, is the one playing the big minions, drawing cards now, uh, in a very good situation. Picking it up swipe is also important. Another Ancient of Lore. So how yeah, do you deal with this board? <clears throat> you can go for this sort of uh, board clear. Yeah, I like this. Just get, getting out the minions that you have right now. And wow, that's interesting. Even going for face. He has that Doom Guard, and he knows that he has Burst in hand as well, um, Burst in his deck as well. So trying to force Druid to trade instead of you know trading with uh, whatever Druid is playing. Also, Force knows yeah. that he is um, behind on cards. So if he goes into trading, he's going to lose eventually because Druid is just going to outvalue him with the cards in hand. Yeah, exactly. Uh, now he knows that Kalendo has so many options right now, so he has to end the game in the next two or three turns. And like you said, with a Doom Guard in hand, it's very likely if he draws into a second power of Whelming, for example, that uh, he can end that game. It's possible that is, he's like, also playing Dark Bomb. Yeah, it's it's possible, but I think Forsen is probably running the more of the Kalento slash Savitz lineup, and that deck uh, doesn't run Dark Bomb. All right. So what do you do being, being uh, said, Kalento here? Uh, well, the goal is obviously to clear as much as possible. So yeah, I like the keeper. And uh, yeah, this is just fine. It's it gets rid of most of the power on the board. And uh, it develops the board in order to deal with uh, like a possible Mulganus coming up on turn 9. Interesting, double Bane, Bane of Doom. Yeah, double Bane of Doom. Double, ba double Bane of Doom can be amazing or really disappointing. Is he, is he going for a Bane of Doom here? Trying to get that Ancient of Lore easily. Oh, he can still go for Bane of Doom on a 2-4. All right, another random demon. Three fox okay. zones. That's oh, actually that's perfect. Right as well. it, it perfectly contests the pilot shredder, and now Clanto will have to deal, uh, invest some more resources in order to deal with it. Um, he might even have to burn a, a swipe here. But still, Forsen's hand is not great with double Nerubin egg. Not really an activator. He has a Doom Guard, which is good, but uh, but then it's not like you play Doom Guard before before you play Mulganis. If he plays Mulganis right. next turn, it's just Vanilla Mulganis without Demons on board, because I believe the 3-5 is going to die here. Yeah, the problem with Mulganis is if Kalento is able to draw into his BGH, that's just a complete blowout. Uh, having a 3-mana card like perfectly counter a 9-mana card is just way too much. Uh, Kalento, he sees that, like, he, he knows that he has to deal with this Felguard. Uh, immediately, because he knows the possibility of a Melganis might be coming up, and you don't want a, uh, a Felguard that is essentially a, a 5-7. Yep. Yeah. So he's going to attack with Pilot to Shredder and get a Will and Zapmatic. Interesting. Oh, look at that power of Wilming. So suddenly 9 points of power, 11 from Forsen this turn, if he wants to. Yeah, I think uh, from his perspective, though, he might be scared of combo or at least partial combo. So I would definitely think that trade into the Whirling Zap Devotic seems pretty obvious at the at the moment. Oh, yeah, definitely. That's the thing you do. But what do you do um, with other stuff? It's like you don't play Malganis here. Um, so you're possibly forced. Oh, he's going for the Doom Guard. Okay, so he's playing way around... Uh, the Force of Nature combo. This ensures yeah. that he doesn't die to that combo unless Kalento draws an uh, Enervate plus a Savage Roar. Oh, look at that BGH top deck. If that would be a Mal Malganis, that would be very painful for Forsen. Yeah, actually fairly fortuitous that Forsen discarded the Malganis, and also fortuitous that he didn't discard the Power Overwhelming. I think that card, if Forsen is going to win this game, it's going to be the key card. I certainly agree. He may, he may still draw into a second Doom Guard. All right, so Colanto um, has options. Double Trent is contesting those free two minions. He's going to need to draw into a second Argus right now. Uh, Flame Imp is not good at all. Oh, and, oh there's the Argus. Argus. Put the on your head. 
Yeah, perfect. Um, and now, although Kalanto does have the swipe, it does mean that Kalanto will have to use his next turn in order to uh, go for that swipe. If that knife hits the Trent, that means it's, uh, what, like six points of damage? Okay, uh, the juggles are pretty bad. Yeah, they Probably, li like, like, they missed everything, pretty much. He needed one of the Treants to die, um, ideally. And if one of the Treants died, he would have actually been in a decent position. And unfortunately for this, uh, Forsen will have to give up his actual Doom Guard, a 5-2 for a 2-1. He's considering actually just uh, leaving it up. Oof. Yeah, I think not attacking is also a play. You've seen you've seen one swipe. All right, so this means that Colento can get with the swipe. Uh, he clears two minions, deals one damage, and a thirteen. With Savage Root, he's able to deal five with Hero Power, uh, which is ten three damage off. Now, I think the big question here is, do you proc this egg, or do you leave it alive? Uh, you can possibly just uh, attack into it as well, right? Just attack into the egg and then swipe. Alright, so Colento is just going to set up um, a kill next turn with the Savager in hand. Dr. Boom seems like a good draw, but unbeknownst to Forsen, uh, without a ton, he's essentially dead to the Savage Roar. If he uses Power of Warming to kill the 4-6, and uh, then he still has a taunt. Well, he needs the Power of Overwhelming, his Defender of Argus, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's kind of funny. And now he's even afraid to play this Flame Imp, which is quite unfortunate. 7, 11. It seems, it seems like he's still alive um, with Savage Roar. With Druid of Claw, that's it. Druid of the Claw, Charge, Savage Roar. He's going for the Taunt. Kalento just counting damage now. He was off with the single Savage Roar, but now it's enough. All right, so Kalento going to take game number one versus Forsen. And uh, securing the Druid win, which is very important because Forsen was targeting Druids with his lineup. Yeah, essentially right now, Forsen has a very little chance to win the rest of the series. This was actually kind of the deciding game here. If Druid could take the first victory, then it would be actually Forsen in a very unfavorable position because the rest of his decks, they're not as strong overall against the lineup of Warrior and Warlock, but they are strong against just Druid. For example, I think Kalento is running uh, Demon Zoo himself, and that deck uh, usually will be have a favorable matchup against Mech Shaman, and it'll have a favorable matchup against uh, Mech Mage. And the Dru and the Zoo Mirror, of course, is going to be a coin flip. So yeah. Forsen, definitely a tough road ahead of him. Yeah, but still, if Forsen is left with coin flips, it, it, it is possible for him to win. Uh, those are aggro decks, and aggro decks can surprise people. You know, it's like... You miss one answer, aggro deck has the best opening, and suddenly aggro deck wins in turn three. We've seen that before happening at DreamHack. So uh, I would not uh, say that Forsen is already dead. Uh, I think he still has a chance to, to take the game, the, the series from Colento, but definitely an uphill battle, battle after the Druid securing the win. Yeah, it's, I'm curious as to see like what Colento picks next, but to be honest, I don't think it really matters too much. All three decks, all three remaining decks from Forsen are just so similar. They're favorable against the same things. They're unfavorable against the same things. So it'll just be, uh, like you said, coin flips at this point. But when the when we face the coin flip, it's always coming down to, up to skill and decisions as well. You know, the cards that, that come. So you, you can still try to make the coin flip uh, more favorable for you. And um, whenever you make a mistake also, like you are giving a chance to your opponent. Okay, interesting hands from both players. We have uh, Forsen, he actually has a Rockbiter and he has a Power Mace. Those are two of the key cards in this matchup, especially the Power Mace, because, because it can often like two for one or three for one, um, just by the, the attack alone against Zoo. That being said, I think Kalento also has a very good hand. He has the Egg plus Power Overwhelming plus... Um, plus Void Terror uh, combo right there, and he'll be able to activate his egg on this next turn. Forsen won't be allowed to use the Urshock. One of the most 
interesting things here is that there is Willowing Zapmatic that's being protected by its haunts. And there is that Earthshock and also the Rockbiter. So oh, yeah. with this, it is possible that Forsen will just win on turn four. Yeah, exactly. And I think uh, right now he can actually go for somewhat of a board clear, perhaps clear off this Nubian Egg. So he can set up a really good attack with the Whirling Zabomatic next turn. Yeah, and uh, he is dealing 6 damage with Zabomatic. So this is 12 damage total already from 1 minion. Okay, here's oh, a Silence. That's si going to be yeah, good. Yeah, Silence is actually helping a lot. Without Silence, that would be it. No, even he kills the uh, Whirling Zabomatic and Forsen is certainly very sad right now. If that uh, Zapomatic survived, it would have gotten plus two damage from the power base and plus three damage from the Rockbiter weapon. So that's three plus five. It'll have done 16 damage. Um, and if you add that to the power base, hitting your opponent's base for three damage, that's 19 damage from Force. Yeah, just that would be lethal. Zapomatic. That would be lethal. With, with like a Defender of Argus uh, was just death. But now uh, he can still go for the burst if he wants to just um developing a minion here is fine but you know getting your opponent lower and lower i don't know if trading is good here i would prefer going for face uh, especially with you know airshock crackle and rockbiter in your hand yeah oftentimes uh, you not only just play the deck but you play your hand so you see what's in your hand you see how you can use how can you use the cards in your hand to win the game and forcing the sides yeah these are all kind of bursty cards so I just might as well use them to burst my opponent down. In most cases, being a mech shaman, you try to burst your opponent because your deck strategy supports so much burst, with like lava burst and uh, rock biters, weapons, crackles. It's it's more possible that you're going to draw something to deal damage and finish your opponent than just uh, draw a good minion to set up a board. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, Forsen might be slightly punished here. Oh, that's that's an interesting draw. So he clears up as much of the board as uh, possible. I need to set up with a Void Terror. Unfortunately, uh, that will get slightly punished by Earthshock. Earth Shock. Exactly. All right, so amazing Earthshock for Forsen here. Uh, he can even trade, kill it with the Rogue yeah. Rider. Exactly, and now the, the lone defender of Argus is kind of a dead card in Kalanto's hand. And then Forsen is not overloaded, so he will be able to play Fire Elemental next turn. And next turn. Exactly. Like two powerful cards on turn 6 and 7. Yeah. Everyone knows about like the double high bane plays, but if you remember back in the day, Shaman was actually a really great class, and it dealt really well um, with Zoo, uh, partly because of those Fire Elementals that you can get on turn 6. Oh, wow. You double Crackle. Monk, this is almost over. Wow. If he if he I rolls a spell damage totem next turn. Defender of Argus. Kalanto's having nice draws as well. He will be able to kill um the two free and then just uh taunt two minions. Yeah, but does it actually matter because of that double crackle? If Forsen gets uh, a different totem than a spell damage totem and then misses I guess he still oh, wins. Well, yeah he still wins that's, with this. that's certainly it <laughs> unless right. crackle fizzles oh, okay. uh, fizzles twice yeah Namsha can't do zero damage unfortunately for Forsen and Forsen is going to take another game uh, so it's actually tied up one to one right now nice so Forsen taking the ga game number two we have the tie, and um, what does it mean for us? What does it mean for Forsen? Does it mean Forsen still means, has a... Yeah, it means Forsen still has uh, somewhat of a decent chance uh, going into later rounds. He has the mech... Mech mage, mage and remaining. he has that Zeman lock. Yeah, so like you said, it's going to be even more coin flips going against Kalento's uh, demon lock. Kalento, of course, was kind of the first person to get Demon Lock to rank one legend in Europe. So he certainly knows how to pilot that deck very well. He's kind of like the creator of that deck. 
And every deck that has come after that, including Savita's deck, has kind of originated from his original build. Unfortunately, unfortunately, we're not going to see the mirror here. Uh, we are going to see Warlock versus Warrior, game number three, Kalento versus Forsen. It's going to start now. I would love to see the mirror, though. Uh, you know, just what's what's the best feeling in the world than um, just defeating the creator of the deck with his own deck to advance? Oh, you're you're sadistic, Nimsh. Uh, unfortunately for Forsen, the double Doom Guard start is kind of the opposite of what you want. He's going to need to essentially draw into a Void Caller very soon. Kalento's hand seems a bit slow, but on turn 4, he'll have a, quite an explosive turn with both Death Spite and the Dread Corsair. Yeah, whenever whenever you get a Death Spite as a um, Patron Warrior, you should be happy. One of the key cards. Not only helps you to like survive and um, clear the clear the board of your opponent, it also provides so many good effects and synergies with your cards. Alright, so just going for the Acolyte here to, to get a couple of cards and contest that uh, juggler. Force the trade. Okay, that's quite an interesting line of play for uh, Forsen. I might have actually even considered running the Flame Impin. Because as we know, Patron Warrior has so many cards that just deal one damage. Just uh, Death Spite, Whirlwind, and even uh, Unstable Ghouls are very common cards in Patron Warrior. Klanto, oh my god, he has such a great uh, hand right now. He has double Dread Corsair that he can play, but he might not actually play it this turn because he knows he can clear the board on the next turn. Yeah, there is no reason to play them uh, looking at this board. You hope there is no Defender Vargas. Because just uh, just losing them doesn't make sense. But now he will be forced to play them. Yeah, so he can play them and then play his Grim Patron. So he'll have two Dread Corsairs and two Grim Patrons. And that, that's going to be pretty good even though he is, isn't able to clear some of this board. Blood and plunder. Blood and plunder. Still a pretty good position, uh, protecting the Patron as well. Killing Juggler, I believe, is a much more priority target. Forsen yeah, might be uh, forced to, to play the Doom Guard. I think Bane of Doom should be nice as well. Let's see. Yeah, Bane of Doom. What do you target? Yeah, do you Doom target? Uh, if you get something like. I guess Doom Guard would be very nice. Succubus is uh, about average. It's alright. And also, we have to consider the fact that Kalento's already at 9 health. So it's really low. And Forsen does have the Doom Guard. Uh, so, just a simple power of roaming Doom Guard. Like, Kalento needs to think about ar uh, start arming up uh, every turn now. Because he, he has to consider power overwhelming Doom Guard, right? Unless he clears the board, then it's just Doomguard, which is 5, and uh, he will have to do something with it. Yeah, uh, Kalento has a, quite a difficult decision here. He drew the Fire War Axe, which is at one, uh, on one hand kind of a perfect card, but on the other hand, he's going to die to um, the Doomguard if he kills the Succubus. I think uh, Unstable Ghoul is nice, actually. Because then uh, you protect... Oh, he's going for the gamble here that there is no Doom Guard. Interesting. Uh, this is uh, going to I kill him, but the decision was that uh, assuming there is no Doom Guard, he will be able to stabilize, stabilize next turn. Yeah, um, yeah. Assuming there is no Doom Guard, that was probably the better play. But you just had to like play your odds there, and it's kind of like uh, Kalento at that point. He felt like um, if he doesn't have a Doom Guard this turn, eventually he'll draw into Doom Guard, and I don't see myself getting a lot of turns to armor up anyway, so. I might yep. as well just play the quote-unquote stronger play this turn and just hope that my opponent doesn't uh, draw into something really nice. Yeah, yeah. but uh, unfortunately for Kalento, Forsen had a, a Doom Guard, even two of them, and is going to get a lead over Kalento. Now Forsen just needs to win with his Mech Mage, and Kalento still has the Green Patron Warrior, which is good versus Mech Mage, but it can still lose. We've seen uh, Patron losing to Mech Mage before, uh, yesterday. And then he has his Warlock. Yeah, the the key card 
uh, two or two, at least two of the key cards in this matchup are the Snow Chuggers and the Neutrons. Um, both kind of disallow weapon usage, especially the Snow Chugger. And uh, Forsen's double Snow Chugger start yesterday was one of the reasons. Uh, uh, I, I don't know if it's Forsen, but one of there was a Mech Mage yesterday that opened with double Snow Chugger, and it just completely shut a Grim Patron out. I think it was actually RDU's Mech Mage against yeah. uh, against Show's Warrior. Yep, that's true. Show was never able to use weapons as a Green Patron. And right now we can see Colento not even having those weapons in hand. Um, they yeah, are he, still he three actually, cards versus Mech Mage. He mulliganed away uh, a Death Spite, and I think that was actually the correct decision based on, like, it, if his opponent actually had a Snow Chugger, then he would never be able to use the Death Spite, and that's just essentially a dead card in Colento's hand. Alright, so Forsen opens with that Snow Chugger, hopes it's going to survive. There is an execute though. Um, coin Acolyte of Pain. Yeah, I like it. It's uh, kind of difficult for your opponent to deal with. In fact, actually, impossible to deal with effectively. And wow, this is actually he's going to enrage it. That's quite interesting. Drawing a card here, and it's going to contest the Snow Chugger very well. Forcing, he. Uh, Normally, I think he would want to attack into this uh, Acolyte, but I think he also values just freezing his opponent's face a lot. Yeah. Oh, uh, Unstable Ghoul, that's another good draw. A very nice card. So, here what you can do is, uh, you can obviously Whirlwind. You can, um, can't really play the weapon. You can draw two cards from Acolytes. Uh, you can possibly even... Play the Unstable Ghoul, perhaps. Okay, just drawing the cards first, that's fair. If he played the uh, Unstable Ghoul, then he could have uh, forced his opponent to attack in and just like pass with the Acolyte of Pain. But he sees uh, this, he sees his Snow Chugger as being like such a huge threat, so he's gonna get rid of it right away. Yeah, uh, and uh, in case, like he has the Fireworks already, but in case he's going to draw into Death Spite and he has uh, two draws, he wants to have that Death Spite online and it. Wow, what a perfect call here. All right, so it's uh, for now it's looking good for Kalento. Even though uh, Forsen has those minions, Kalento was able to secure uh, the the board. Uh, he has the death spite. He's not frozen. He still has uh, a decent amount of health on on turn four. Yeah, once again, Kalento just passes with the Dread Corsair in hand. I think it's because the board currently it, uh, on the board currently there's just too much good stuff on the board for uh, Forsen to trade with. Like that Spire Tank trading into your Dread Corsair is not something you want. I would definitely don't want that. But then again, like you would probably just see Mech Warper. Um, hmm. If there will be Azur Drake, and um, well, Forsen, if Forsen trading into a free free with a free four wouldn't make sense because then Death Spite just clears everything. But then uh, if there will be a Dread Corsair, then uh, Azur Drake would never see play uh, on that turn. Like Forsen would do something else. Wow, that was a pretty heads-up play by Kalento, just getting rid of the, getting rid of the Spider Tank. And uh, he he deems it necessary because, he, first of all, he takes one damage, but the real reason is that the Spider Tank is a mech, so, and he doesn't really want to activate either the Tinkertown Technician or the Blast Mage. Also, like the spell damage that the Azure Drake gives isn't really that relevant. Frostbolt uh, dealing four damage doesn't hit any breaking points, and neither does Fireball doing seven damage. Uh, look at this, by the way. This is plus eight points of damage to the um, to the Berserker. No, wait, plus uh, seven with double whirlwind, so it'll be sixteen, right? Because you double whirlwind, everything dies. Uh, the the gnome dies first. But it's is there a way to uh, is there a way to to clear the board and leave the Berserker at two HP? Is the real question? Uh, do you is really want HP? to clear the four four? You can you can basically go with um, unstable goal, I believe. It's like what you can do is you can whirlwind once, then you can play unstable goal. That's three points of mana, and uh, then your berserker survives even if unstable goal is uh, is defeated. Yeah, playing person here is one of the best plays, but then can you afford that? 
If there is, let's say, a fireball. Six, eight, seven mana. All right, all right. So fireball, frostbolt is not lethal here. Uh, what would be lethal is a fireball, frostbolt, and a whirlwind blade. Um, the 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 spur part that gives plus one attack. Yeah, it's called whirling blades. Yep. So now, um, this is kind of difficult to deal with. I guess you can trade your entire board in and play Doctor Boom. That seems like overall a decent play. Yeah, but you're, you're not, not too happy about with it. everything. It's like if you play Doctor Boom, you will not be able to clear all those minions. Yeah, exactly. Um, this kind of locks Forsen out. Uh, maybe a spare part will help, but I can't imagine what. Reversing switch. Uh... Well, he can still clear uh, everything with the ping and then play uh, Pellet Shredder and, uh, and a Cogmaster. And he gets Mirror Entity, I believe, so... It's not a terrible turn, but um, definitely is slowing him down a bit. Yeah, Unfortunately, though, Mirror Entity against a Patron Warrior might not be the best because your opponent can obviously just throw down an unstable goal onto the board. And yeah. that actually hurts you more than helps you. Not as bad as Doomsayer, of course. Not as bad as Explosive Sheep. But uh, certainly it's going to leave a bit of hurt. Well, right now Colento still doesn't really have a kill. Uh, he has a Grommash, uh, which is great for him. But that's 10 points of damage, so it's not enough yet. He, he needs to start thinking how to deal damage and um, not to die at the same time. I don't think he's really in danger of dying. Like Even if there is double Fireball, it's 12, 16, 18 points of damage. <laughs> So he is dead to double fireball, right? Yeah. That's 19, it's actually, even. Uh, but then you will not play around double fireball. And you know there is um, two spur parts in the opposing hand. So one card, hopefully not a fireball, and hopefully not a fireball top deck. That's too much. So I would like uh, seeing Death Spite going for face, I believe. A Warsong Commander is pretty key. He doesn't yeah, have anything that he can charge into. But he can at least proc this uh, Unstable Ghoul here. Yeah, I like it. He chooses to do so with a Fire Warax because he is trying to play around uh, exactly what you said. And uh, also he's fireball. gaining health. Yeah, yeah. Well, now with Unstable Ghoul, he will be um, able to survive, but still. Taking a safe approach is always good as well. Especially if you are so much ahead on cards. Alright, so Forsen just going for Dr. Boom. Uh, the question is, do you trade? That was, that's why he was thinking about it. Do you trade with Pilot Shredder? Because it can always end up being the, the Doomsayer. And Forsen got Doomsayer twice at Seed Story Cup, so he respects the card. Kalento, he can potentially clear this board, depending on what the boom bot hit. Uh, with a Grom and a Whirlwind, it's gonna, a Kalento's going to have to get pretty unlucky for both boom bots to hit Grom for 4 HP. Yeah, but it can happen, so let's see how lucky Forsen is or how unlucky Kalento is. There was a 4, there was, there was a double 4. <laughs> that was close, Monk. Yeah, and now Kalento is in like double fireball range again. Just uh, off the top, but unfortunately for Forsen, uh, he doesn't have a fireball yet, and Clento knows that uh, one of the two cards is a spare part. Yeah, and the Grom is going to get killed by a simple ping. So, still a pretty good turn for Forsen, getting that Snow Chugger and Pilot Shredder. Is there any reason not to play the Snow Chugger here? Uh, there actually is. Um, there is a reason if you feel like Green Patron is going to attack into it because it's a two mana minion. That's so true. That's why but now he, about it. yeah, he fixes that problem though. But unfortunately for him, now this loot hoarder will be able to kill it along with the charge. And a card. Clento uh, probably will charge forward here. He might even play the armor smith first. Just to get some more armor uh, off the loot hoarder attack. 
it, it depends like what is he thinking he can draw here. So um he's he has six mana left. After playing a um after yeah. playing the, the commander. I think he's budgeting some mana for the fire war axe. He doesn't uh necessarily need the uh the whirlwind, but oh this is interesting. Also he's going for part of the shredder. Or okay, is so he he's going to whirlwind? Yeah, he's going to Whirlwind, but he's going to go for maximum uh, Whirlwind effect, or maximum Armorsmith effect, just getting as much armor as possible. Yeah, that makes sense. He's also able to kill basically everything here, um, but maybe beside the, the Light Wall, but it doesn't matter. Forsen is already in top deck mode. He has no cards in hand. He used his Dr. Boom. It is possible that he's going to get Antonidas, but he doesn't have the spells. Other than that... Uh, Ragnaros would be amazing if he plays one, uh, but it's not that common in mech mages. Um, some people play Pyroblast. Blast Mage with no mechs on board is decent, but not amazing. Yeah, Certainly better sad. than a Clockwork Gnome. The question is, do you actually do you save this Goblin Blast Mage and force and deems that necessary to get the full effect off of the Blast Mage? Kalento, after seeing that force and kept a card, he must be thinking that this is probably a fireball or at least a frostbolt. A visible reaction from force and disappointed about the green patron. He knows that Kalento now has most of the tools. He is going to ping that to one, but uh, this board is not great, especially with the blast mage in hand. Oh, there is a first fireball. Is he going to fireball the the free free? Yeah, uh, he's like currently trying to play the control game here, but unfortunately that's not going to work out for him because of the death spite in Colento's hand and even a no mission venter. Yeah, drawing a card for Colento and the card is Battle Rage. You can always cycle it now, but uh, probably just going to save it. Yeah, I think he values armoring up a lot more. Just playing it slow and steady can win Kalento the race, almost certainly. So, yeah. Uh, Force and there's pretty much nothing that he can draw at this point, except if he plays a Ragnaros, like you said. Also, Battle Rage draws three cards next turn. Or maybe even four if he gets a minion. Whoa. Well, that's a minion you can play. <laughs> Works with the Whirlwind Effect and a Battle Rage. Yeah, I would say that's even more than one minion. That's a couple of dwarves. Everyone, get in here! Great impression, Nims. Top notch. And wow, Kalento, he cycled so much, like that, like he's pretty much drawn every card in his deck. Yeah, he has everything. D one card left. Oh wow! You can even play Warsong now, right? And just interesting. So you play Warsong? Oh, he's going to to armor up. Yeah, Forsen is in a really bad position right now. I mean, that that can't be understated. Something like a flame strike. Something like a flame flame strike might be a card you want to play. Colento got basically all the cards in his deck. And now it's only the matter how do you finish? And it's going to be, of course, with the Frothing Berserker. That's actually really interesting for Clento. He actually drew through like pretty much his entire deck in order to beat this Mech Mage. So it was definitely very close. Yeah, that was closer than anticipated. So Clento is going to take game number four, and we are going to advance to game number five, Monk. This will yeah, be I, the Mech Mage versus Warlock. I hadn't thought this series would be so close, especially with Clento taking the first match with uh, his Druid deck, a deck that was very unfavored against all three of Forsen's lineup, all three of Forsen's decks. But, you know, it comes down to it, and in the end, it is, like you said, the mid-range zoo, the demon zoo, against Forsen's mech mage. And yet again, the zoo is going to be favored, but you know what? It still could be anyone's game, especially with if Kalento has a Melganis in his opening hand. Oh, yeah, certainly. And also, we've seen Forsen getting really close last game. Uh, if you have those fireballs earlier... That game would be over. Uh, right now, Forsen has a decent opening. Uh, Mech Warper with all those mechs. If there is nothing to contest the Mech Warper on turn, uh, on turn two, then Forsen will get a very snowbally start. 
Yeah, I mean, what what even does uh, the zoo have to contest the Mech Warper this early? Um, Pretty much Dark Bomb, but no zoos play Dark Bomb. Yeah, basically what you have is a one drop. With one drop you can contest this, but um, Colenso did miss the, the one drop there. There's even a Cogmaster, uh, but definitely a Snow Chugger is really nice with an Aetron. Yeah, I think this is still alright for um, for Kalento though, because he has the Imp Gang boss on this turn, or even double knife jugglers. Either option would be very nice. Imp so Gang you also boss hit just... the shield here. Okay, mission successful. Yeah, well, killing the Snow Chugger would be nice as well. But then the Snow Chugger... So, it's so interesting because the Void Walker is contesting the Snow Chugger. So what Forsen might be forced to do is just ping here, yeah. You just have to use the ping and fight for the minions. But uh, it, it is making him slower. Yeah, it's probably not a game you want to be playing uh, against a zoo. Just trying to fight for board control this early. The knife jugglers are doing so much work at this moment. All right, so is there any other play than an imp gang boss? Um, you can also tap and, and try to get it to drop. Oh, you can also okay. go for power, Void Terror. Denying the mech before turn 4, one of the best things you can do. And there is no mech for Forsen, there is only that mad scientist. Alright, there is a mech now. Do you fireball yeah, then? can kind of deal with this. Um, I don't think you fireball here, because it doesn't develop the board enough. Maybe I would consider like a mad scientist and then paying off the... Um, the uh, Void Terror because you can then set up Mirror Entity and at the same time uh, you can set up the next turn. But I guess uh, Forsen, he just really wants to play th uh, the 2 drop and the 3 drop next turn or even potentially a low theb. I like I think, uh, Fireball. I think yeah. Yeah, so like I wanted to explain why Forsen played the Fireball uh, from, my, from my perspective. Uh, the, the thing is like the Void Terror had too much attack and if you don't if you don't kill the Void Terror at that moment, uh, you're just getting hit by uh, by that face. And then you will be forced into trading and uh, Warlock will have the tempo. Warlock will be one dictating the minions that you have to trade into them, where you do have a very nice turn 5 play. So if you clear the board, it's possible that the minions that are being played on 5 are not contesting your five, the turn 5 play. Yeah. Definitely agree there. And now there's a board that uh, Forsen can't deal with. This matchup is all about board control, so Kalento feels perfectly fine to sacrifice some cards in order to try to get that board control. Yeah, I like Spider Tank and uh, Clockwork Gnome in here. Clockwork Gnome contesting both Flame Imp and Doom Guard. Such a great card. Look at that. Abuse of Surgeon might be might be interesting here uh, to buff the the Gangbus to kill the free four. Oh, Void Terror. Hmm. Now, the real question is, what series of trades can you make here for maximum efficiency? Um, on this turn, you actually can give your opponent an Abusive Sergeant, or you can pr perhaps try to save that Abusive Sergeant later to give it to, to give your opponent an Abusive Sergeant later on in the game. I think I would prioritize uh, killing the max and going for face as well. So I would probably kill the 2-1 um, the maybe with the 2-4. And uh, get it, um, get a, uh, get an imp. Then with the free two, kill the free four. Uh, with Doomguard, go for uh, go for face and play the Voiter uh, to sacrifice Doomguard and maybe a one one imp. Okay, this is uh, a play I did not expect though. Again, going for the huge Void Terrors. He's seen one fireball already, so he doesn't think his opponent has a second fireball. And he just kind of ignores the mirror entity altogether, to be honest. Yeah, I like it as well. It's like Colento noticing that Doomguard is not going to give him uh, much value and um, actually favoring the, the big Void Terror. It's not like Mech Mage is running a lot of taunts. Yeah, pretty much it's just Onoatron and the Rusty Horn spare parts. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, Implosion is great. 
You can even risk just killing the the 4-4, four, four, or do you still go for the mech? Yeah, I think you want to deny the mechs, especially because uh, after this, uh, Forsen, if he draws a Blast Mage and he gets a great Blast Mage, he can still come back into the game. Oh man, he can just go for phase with those because uh, Mech Mage doesn't really have a way to clear all those small minions. There is Antonidas with stealth. But then, you... is he dead if he plays it? Uh, I think you actually have to taunt here. You can go for the Void Terror, and then there is only okay, what, yeah. like six points of damage on board. So Doomguard kills you, <laughs> but you will be able to kill your opponents with double fireball. It's 12, 17. Well, not really. Actually, this is this is really awkward. But you will be able wow. to taunt up the the Antonidas. So uh, Kalanto, the the key here is that Kalanto actually can't tap, and yeah. I think it's yeah he just has to play the cards that. He has available right now. But there is and the mirror entity. Exactly. So the thing is, the mirror entity actually doesn't change much because giving your opponent one additional damage from the Haunted Creeper um, actually isn't that impactful because he needs uh, two extra damage in order to finish off Kalento. Look at Forsen. Forsen is kind of smiling. This is such a difficult situation for Kalento. If he plays a minion, he's dead. If he taps and doesn't hit the Doomguard, or um, a defender of Argus, he's dead. So the best line of play is not to do anything, just go for phase and hope that he's not dead next turn. But you know what? Unfortunately, uh, not only does Forsen have a potential two fireballs that he can use this turn, he also has a rusty horn. So yeah. that just prevents Forsen from dying as well. Um, then Colento will need an Iron Beak. So... Iron Beak will be lethal. Is Doomguard lethal? Let's say there's Power of Overwhelming. Yeah, um, Five. Power of Overwhelming is not lethal. I'm thinking oh, if man. there's merit to Frostbolting and then pinging instead of Fireballing. But uh, I think it's much better if you put your opponent down to a point where he can't tap for additional outs. I agree. Oh, he's frost bolting. Okay, so setting up lethal on the setting next Setting up lethal turn. next turn. And there is another Haunted Creeper, which is a blank and not doing anything, really. Uh, even if he taps, I don't think there is a card that can help him here and win the game. I, okay, so maybe Forsen was playing around Power Overwhelming? Well, Colento had two cards in hand, so there was a chance for Power Overwhelming Doomguard. So that's why Forsen had a safer play. Uh, we've seen the hands, we've seen that Colento actually needs to get something great, and uh, that uh, the life tap is super important. But from Forsen's perspective, there were two cards already, and uh, and maybe a possible kill setup. So a safer play to just ensure that you win next turn was an excellent uh, decision. And Forsen is going to advance to our top four, eliminating Colento from HTC Invitational. What a series, Monk. Like, wow, right? Yeah, wow, and especially because Forsen, he's made it actually so far into this tournament. Who would have thought in the round of four, Forsen boys, dad would have actually made it. And it could be, you know what, Forsen's first tournament victory. He's certainly been hungry for one, and he certainly made it very close to the finals. Um, even getting second place, I believe, at the first Vita game, House Cup, and just falling just slightly short. Yeah, uh, he is Forsen, so round of four uh, for Forsen, and we'll see if he is going to become a final Sen. Um, later, we still have three amazing matches. I believe the next one will be Pais versus Hyped. So, guys, don't go anywhere. Stay tuned. We're going to get back um, after a short break. <laughs> 